Tell somebody beside you, I'm here for a purpose. And I will fulfill my purpose. Tell the person again, I'm on this earth for a purpose. Nothing can change the plan of God for me. I will fulfill my purpose. In first service, it was so wonderful. But in second service, we want to talk about grace to help. Tell somebody grace to help. Do you know many people will die early because of no help? Many destiny will not come to pass because of no help. Many life will be stagnated because of no help. Many will not be able to go far in destiny because of no help. But for you, because you are here this morning, your help will appear. I can hear your amen. You will receive help. I can hear your amen. You will receive help. I can hear your amen. You will receive help. Before the end of this week, you will receive help. For your desire expectation, you will receive help. Where door has been closed to you, you will receive help. I'm reading the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 34. Book of Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 34. We're talking about grace to help. There are two major words, grace and help. You will not lack any one of them. I can hear your word now. You will not lack any one of them. I'm reading from verse 32. It says, and the multitude of them that believe were of one earth and of one soul. Neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. In verse 33, can we read together if you are there with me? And with great power gave apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. So there are little grace. There is great grace. There is ordinary grace. And many times... You are wondering what is grace. And Brother Paul, the same Brother Paul says something very powerful in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. He said, you can have anything you desire on earth. He said, I can give you grace to become what you want to become. I can give you grace to prevail in destiny. He said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always having, that means not have, having all sufficiency in all things. May abound to every good works. Not to every bad works. Uh, to every what? What is grace? Grace is the power of God that makes your weakness to be strong. Grace is a gift of God that makes you look stupid before men, but before people you become great. Grace is what makes you look as if you can't do anything, but while you are touching it, it becomes wonderful before everybody. Grace is called unmerited favor. What you didn't work for, what empower your weakness to become great, what turn your life around and makes you presentable before men. Grace is very important. That's why I need grace. You see, everything you desire from God is possible. You can get it. He said it can make all grace abound to you. This is all things, that means all things is possible to you. Remember last week I was saying that it is possible to have what you desire. It is possible to overcome sickness. It is possible to overcome failure in life. It is possible to be better than your parents. Because you are the better addition. It is possible for you to break causes in your family. It is possible. You carry grace for divine healing. You carry grace for divine progress. You carry grace for breakthrough. You carry grace for lifting. You carry it. And I believe someone will be asking, Pastor, if I carry all this grace... Why my life still looks like this? If I carry grace to be blessed, why am I still struggling? If I carry grace to be healed, why am I still sick? Now some of you miss for service. I think you should get the CD. See what he said eh? Your Where you are now is determined by the understanding you have about this God. Where you are now is determined by how you see this God. I have a very big God. It's always by my side. Now, when problem come, do you see the big God? Or do you focus on your problem? So, God can mix every grace about you. That means anything that looks difficult for people should be easy for you. That's what it means. 
Where people go and life is so difficult for them, when you get there, it should be what? It should be easy. That is why he said, you are the light of the world. Not the darkness of, you are the light of the world. Not the light of your family, of the world. Where people are struggling in the world, you must be the light. He said, you are the salt of the world. Where there is sorrow, you must be a sweetener in the place. Every power that have hold your life down today, the grace of God will destroy it in the name of Jesus. I can hear you. The, gold, the break the date of the world will destroy in the name of Jesus. Amen. How is your relationship with God? Because that will determine the grace that comes up, upon your life. We all have grace. He said the grace of God appeared to all men. The book of Titus. We all have grace. But grace has level. Grace can be small. Grace can be, can be, can, can, can be, can be great. He said he gave them great grace. To be able to do what they need to do in life. If you must rise in destiny, you need grace. And if you have to make up your life, you have to become what God has designed you to be and stay there, you need help. Tell somebody you need help. The book of Agai chapter 2 verse 8 says something very powerful. It said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord. That means he has everything. Favor to have what you desire is coming upon your life. I can't hear me. Favor to have what you desire is coming upon your life. Do you know what Brother Paul said in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8? I want us to follow me this morning. He said, for by grace you have saved through what? Faith. By grace you have saved. What are, what are you saved from? You are saved from poverty. You are saved from sin. You are saved from backwardness. You are saved from the power that is holding people down in your family. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of what? Of God. So grace is the gift of God. That is why he said that when your way pleases him, in the book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7, he said it will make your enemy to be at peace. When your way what pleases him. That means when you do what God's love, when you do what God wants. Uh, many times, many people have busted that grace. Um, if, because I carry grace of God, I can still do what anything I want to do. No. But Apostle said, even though the grace is available to you because you are a child of God, because you are God, you cannot remain in that grace and still be committing sin. He said, can we remain in grace? Can we remain in sin and still ask the grace to abound? He said, no. So grace of God is available, but the grace is not just for everything. You need to walk in the will of God. To be at peace means to carry grace, to be accepted among people, to be referenced among people. To carry the power to change your destiny in the, among people. Now, one of the things Jacob withdrew from the life or withdrew from the life of Reuben, he withdrew the grace to rise in destiny. He said, Jacob, Reuben, listen to me. Even though you carry what it takes to rise, even though there is grace upon you, grace of firstborn, that is why if you have firstborn, be praying for your firstborn. Have you noticed that most firstborn go through tough times? I check all the firstborn in the Bible. Ah, I checked it. Oh, check all the firstborn in the Bible. And check your own firstborn. It's not new. It is a power that wants to deal with the firstborn. It's the power that came out from the first, from the from you. It's your strength. He said, even though you have the strength from heaven, I'm your father. I withdraw the grace. Every power that I've tampered with the grace of God upon your life, that power will be buried today in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know why we're saying this and we're calling, we're making prayer because this is our season of prayer. This is the month we have to pray. Please, you have to pray. If you have, have one father and one person that is praying for you in secret, that their prayer is not enough. You need prayer. You need to what? To pray on your own. You need to come together to pray. That is why Brother Paul says something. That a part amount to hinder you to pray. That my part amount to hinder you to come to the presence of the Lord. There are some sin that might have heard you down. Some of the sin you don't even know about it. Now some of you cry sometimes. That, why am I going to trouble? I don't even know about it. You don't need to know about it. Uh, David said, um, and the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I what? He said, when the what? And your what? And your foes. You don't need to offend uh, your enemy. You don't need to offend wicked people before they do you wicked. Some people just look you like this and they hate you. You don't need to offend them. You need grace to overcome their plots. You need grace to overcome their power. That's why Brother Paul said in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 16. He said, let us therefore come what? Boldly. You need to be bold. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. 
come boldly. There are power that will tell you that you committed sin yesterday. God cannot hear you. Why are you going to church today? You know, there are power that will tell you that why are you praying? God just kill your child. Why are you praying? You don't need to pray. There are power that will tell you, why do you want to serve this God? That is why Job said, even though you slay me, I will see what? Serve you. It doesn't matter what you are doing. He said, come boldly. Don't let the devil hold you down. Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain what? Mercy and what? And find grace to help in times of need. You need help. Tell somebody, I need help. I can hear a voice say, you need help. You need help to move forward in destiny. You need help to walk, to go forward in life. You need help to achieve your purpose. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Don't let your weakness overcome your, your destiny. Don't let what you are going through to hold you down. Don't let the news you've had affect your destiny. Oh, because you are abused yesterday does not mean that your life will wreck. No, they, they just took advantage of you. But that will not happen again. Now, because of that, you don't let your life just go down. You can rise. Say, come boldly. Tell somebody, come boldly. Tell somebody, come boldly to the throne of grace. Say that again. Say, come boldly to the throne of grace. So, grace is two things. I want to show something this morning before we pray. Grace is two things. Uh, we all enjoy some measure of grace. Grace is undeserved, undeserved kindness. We are saved. Not because we are righteous. Not because I'm holy. Not because I gave my life to Christ. That's not why. The Bible says, why we are yet sinner? Jesus died for us. You are saved by grace. But you can't remain there. The moment you are saved, you need to work out your salvation also. You need to increase your grace. Grace increase with knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the word of God. Knowledge of activities you do in presence of God. Knowledge of your engagement in things of God. Because you don't have knowledge. What we call knowledge is what? It's from two words. No and what? Uh, the edge and knowing. Because when you know something that I don't know, you have edge over me. We call it knowledge. So when I'm speaking and you don't know it, wow, pastor is right. I just have little edge over you. If you have the same information, where I got the information from, we are in the same class. When you get better information than me, you have edge over me. But you don't have edge until you study and build yourself up in God. So you increase. That is why I said grace is increased with what? With knowledge. Until you have grace, you have knowledge that devil cannot just be messing up with you. You must have grace to know that no power of enemy can pull you down. Even though things are not working well now, that does not mean that's where you will stop. You have to have the grace that you can overcome the power of the enemy. That's about the grace of God is coming upon me. Grace is love. Tell somebody, grace is love. Grace I can hear your voice say, grace is love. love. Say, so one day shall we say, shall we continue in sin so that grace may increase? Grace is love. But at the same time, we can't abuse it. Tell somebody, I will not abuse your grace. Tell yourself, I will not abuse your grace. Tell yourself, I will not abuse your grace. Why do we need help? So I want you all to link it. Why do we need help? Remember what we read in the book of Hebrew? Say, come boldly to the throne of grace where you can receive what? Grace. grace. To obtain what? Mercy. To obtain what again? For the time of what? So, grace, mercy, help. Grace, mercy, help. Grace is a force that empowers your weakness and make you shine. Now, someone say, how did he make it? No, he carried grace. And it's not bright in class. And he got a good job, Grace. I don't know, those that are first class, you go for interview, right? you, you just say rubbish things. But when you carry grace, they are not seeing you anymore. They see God in you. Now, it's grace. Grace makes you, grace turns your life around. When you lose grace, hatred comes into your life. That's why it's when you carry grace, this grace becomes a thing of the past. Have you carried grace? What did they see in that person that they love him? Remember somebody was married sometime in this church. I said, what did they see? Am I in? This girl is not even beauty. Oh, she carried grace. Now, is she carry what? Uh, you need to tap the oil of grace. Touch your say, I carry grace this morning. That's somebody, the oil of grace come upon me. Why do you need his help? Now, because if you don't get the help of God, life will be difficult. You need help to rise in destiny. So what is the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23? It says, for all I've seen, I'm conscious of what? Of the glory of God. 
Romans, Romans 6, 33 says something. For the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen to me. None of us is strong enough to overcome the power of sin. We need the help of God not to be committing sin. Who told you pastor doesn't look girls? It's grace of God. No, some people lie to you. They, they, oh, no, no, no. How oh, close your eyes? No, some of, some of us pretend and we lie. We pretend a lot and we lie. When somebody confesses their sins, you say, Oh, why did you do that? You just, some of them just did the same thing. You need the help of God to run away from sin. You can't do it on your own. That is why many times when you just give your life to Christ, you're a child of God, we tell you, do not neglect the gathering of the brethren. Why are we doing that? To build up our faith. To build up our strength in the word of God. It's to, through the word of God you hear every day. That is what helps you. David said, your word have I stuck in my heart every time so that we not commit sin. So if anybody is telling you, I'm holy, I'm holy, I can't commit sin, I'm very strong. Say, he that standeth through what? So you need his help to overcome the power of sin. Listen to me, devil will try all what he can do. And someone said, pastor, is sin is fornication alone? No, gossiping is fornication, is sin also. The same level that the person that fornicates, you that is gossiping, the same level. Oh, who killed his brother? The same level. The person that just aborted pregnancy to the person that lied, the same level. Oh, there's no something sort of like white lie, black lie, uh, I lie. Now, sin is sin. You need the help of God. You need the help of God not to be committed. Try to, try to tell somebody beside you, I need the help of God. Why do you need this help? To deliver you from some debt. What type of debt are we talking about? Debt of your glory. Glory can die without the help of God. And that's what I just tell you about Reuben. The book of Genesis 49. Bible said, and because Reuben doesn't have the grace to quickly come boldly to his father. Father, I messed up. Your wife enticed me. He's the last wife of Jacob. He enticed me and I, I touched the lady. The father would have said, you are crazy. Why do you do this? You're not supposed to do this. And get angry with him for two weeks. You would have get angry with him for two weeks or two months. But Jacob, keep quiet. He didn't say anything. He knew that he slept with his wife. Now, some of you that are married are still sleeping out. Some of you that are married are still hanging around other people. You know the demonic thing you are doing? You are yoking your life with sin. Some of you are married. The wife you have doesn't satisfy you. I'm not satisfied. What are you looking for? Tell somebody I need grace. Do you know your wife is the same thing as the one you are running after? They have the same thing. One might know how to talk better. But if you can polish the other one, maybe his word also will be good. Uh, some, sometimes your husband might be funny sometimes. Might not be looking good, but you can dress him up. And someone said, my, my husband doesn't know how to dress him up. Who told you that his man that will have to be buying you shirt all the time? His man that have to buy you gift all the time. You've not buy me gift since three weeks. Who told you he's the man that have to buy it all the time? You also buy shoe. For, if the shoe that he's wearing now is not good, buy him shoe. He doesn't know how to tell him you can't be wearing three button suits. He has, life has changed. <laughs> he don't wear that anymore. He needs his pack. Stop giving him a bar every day. Tell him to eat some inter intercontinental food. You need grace and help of God for your glory not to die. We are in an environment that is so toxic to withdraw and destroy your glory. Now, have you noticed that Reuben was not just Reuben? Reuben, if you read the history of Reuben from what his father described, Bible says something very powerful. Say, you are the might and the beginning of my strength. You are the might. Ability to get things done, might. When he starts something, must finish. You carry the might to finish something, but he never finish it. Because Jacob said, I will withdraw it from you. He doesn't have the grace to come boldly to his father and say, I've committed sin. You see, when, when you carry grace, when help of God come upon you, one of the things, he gives you ability to have breakthrough. Samson doesn't carry the grace to receive help. When things begin to happen, Samson is another one. Now, some of, some of you, they didn't give prophecy before they gave back to you. 
For Samson, they gave birth. They gave prophecy to his mom. The child that is in you, you must not eat anyhow. You can't be eating McDonald's. Only oil. Only honey. It came with anointing, but it didn't receive the help in time of need. And do, you, do you know one thing? You must pray for help. That Lord, what you have created me to be, let me be. You have to pray for help. Let me not die halfway. Many of you have vision and passion for what you want to become when you come here. But as you get here, enemy withdraw it. And you are running after shadow. And you left what you need to do. Every power fighting your glory to rise. This morning, you are prevailing over it. Yeah. Why do you need the grace and help of God? So that you can have progress in life. I've read about Jabesh. The man that so have too much in him. But his father, his mother locked the glory up in him. He said, because your father was not around when I gave birth to you. Every absentee father. <laughs> because you are not around and you create more problems. Your parents, your father create more problems for me. Really, that's what he said. Bible said, he went through sorrow. That is the only way in the Bible that they were given birth and they never mentioned the name of your father. The father that doesn't stay around. And the child said, is it my problem that this man refused to be responsible? And my mother laid curse on me. But Bible said, the day he found out that, I can also break it. Bible says, and he prayed to God, and God enlarged his scope. You see something? You need help. And that is why you can live anyhow. Your father even cannot help you. Your mother cannot help you. The only one that can help you is God. That is why the first thing I said, you can't be continue to commit sin and has his grace to abound. That means your way have to please him. You have to walk in him. You have to do his will so that you can enjoy the help of God for you to move forward. Bible said the moment, the moment uh, Jabez was able to break that chakul, Bible said everything began to work. After today, everything that stopped to work in your life will begin to work again in Jesus' name. Yeah. You are not hearing me. You will begin to work again. Yeah. You know, death is a bondage that holds people down. You are free in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, I've come to give you life. And give you what? Abundant. So one of the things grace does is to give you life. Tell somebody I will live life. Now, do you know that you won't live twice on this earth? You will live once. You won't live twice. That's why we're talking about grace and help tonight. And I said something last week that if your life is so miserable, it's not the fault of God. Because he said you have to walk as God. Tell somebody you are God. Tell somebody I'm God. Psalm 82 verse 5 said you are God. He said, many of you don't understand that you carry God in you. That you can command a thing and it can come to pass. He said, if you don't know it, he said, you will die. Like, it's not saying you will die. Like, you no, know, some people are living and they are dead. Some people have job, but they don't even have job. What is the essence of you that you have job, but you can't even pay your bill? You don't have job. What's the essence of you have job, but you can't even live right? Some of you are doing seven jobs at a time. Seven jobs. Locum year, take this year, five year, nine. You rent a house that you are not even living. Eh? Some of you buy houses, not even living in it. Some of you stay in your house for three hours. You rush up again. <laughs> with Alinon and then with, uh, you just use it. That is why it's hard for you to do anything with God. You need God so that you can have life in abundance. Tell somebody, I need help. I can hear your voice say, I need help. Tell yourself, I need help. I can't even say, I need help. How do you know that you are drying up? How do you know that you are drying up, that there's no help for you? That your help is far and grace is far from you, number one. When you are not experiencing peace. When there is no peace in your life. Now, many things can cause peace to go. When your life doesn't please God and you are a child of God, your peace is withdraw. Have you noticed that if you are a child of God and you commit sin, you won't be able to sleep? If you are the one that normally pray before, to pray will be hard for you. Because there is a sin in your heart. And it is hard for you. Even to sing. You are in church just went, my God. Hey. And I just slept with that girl. Chai, 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 chai. Don't worry, I'm not talking to you. So, oh, I just lied to my wife now. So, If you are a child of God indeed, and the conscience of God is in you, there's no way that sin... As long as you've not confessed this thing, you can't do anything. The heaviness will be there. Peace will be taken away. You know that you are drying gradually. There's a grace that is withdrawing. But you know why you are troubled? Because the grace is telling you, quickly confess. So that your life can move forward. There's nothing wrong when you lose your, when, when, you are, when you are going through trouble in your heart. 
find out what is going on. Have I made a mistake? Or devil is tormenting me. After today, every power tormenting your life, you prevail over it. Amen. How do you know you are dry or things is wrong with your grace and your helper? When you are living to please other than God. When your goal is to please other. What men will say? No, many of us please people. You don't please God. I don't know. Many of you are even pleased people not pleasing yourself. I don't want uncle to be get angry. And you are committing sin. Oh, what people will say? Eh, I need other friend. Friend that doesn't care about your destiny. Because of friend, you are messing up your life, your family. When you are pleasing other than God. If I don't go to work today, my boss will get angry. He's, and he has begged me. And God said, go and pray. How many people are still fasting? We're in fasting mode. How many people are fasting? I love this church. You are faithful. Many of us are not fasting. I won't read Isaiah chapter 4 verses to you. He said, when I call, you reject it. When I cry, you didn't come. He said, when the calamity come, I will laugh. You know, that is very dangerous. That means you will pray, pray, pray. You will just like say you are throwing it to the stone. It's not a cause, so that's what he said there. And when do you know you are dry? When your ability to do things of God become hard. It is hard for you to do things for God. It is hard for you to preach to people. It is hard for you to let people know that you are a Christian. No, many of us that are Christian now, we are, we are so ashamed to let people know that you are a child of God. When they are talking about Christ at your job, you quickly move away from there. But when you see them when they are using hell for you, join. You also want to belong. You now do your hand like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you find that it's easy for you to copy the word than copying God, there's dryness. Grace is withdrawing from you gradually. Try. When the spirit of pride come upon you, thought you are this. Uh, if it's not me, nothing will happen. Uh, I, I can do it if it's not me. If I'm not there, nothing will happen. You are a liar. <laughs> devil thought, that's the devil. That's what he was thinking. That if I don't, if I'm not here, God cannot move anyhow. Do you know what they call him? Morning star. Morning what? If you read about devil, you know that he's a morning star. If devil has not sing in the morning, God doesn't move. Read it. And he said, ah, if I'm the one moving and controlling the cherubim of heaven, let me lift up my tent. I will. I will. Ah. God said, I'm the one that created you. What I used to create you is still in my hand. All those I will, I can remove it. And God threw him down. The moment the spirit of pride comes into you, what, you, what is lacking in your life is grace to humble yourself. And when grace is removed, disgrace is coming gradually. It doesn't take long. You know, when disgrace wants to come, it comes gradually. And when it comes, boom, and your eyes will open. Why am I in this? And you now be looking for people to be able to cover you. Like what Adam and Eve did, when the grace removed, they are now looking for leave to cover themselves. They were in presence of the Lord, never knew that they are naked because there is a glory and grace that cover them. The moment the glory removed and the grace removed, we are naked. That's why you find that, ah, I'm paying rent next week. The bill is not enough. I need grace. After today, grace to prevail in destiny is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. When do you know you are dry and grace is withdrawing? When sin is easy for you to commit than living in holy life. Grace is withdrawing. When things of God are not important to you anymore. No, some of us don't even take things of God important anymore. Wednesday, some of us don't like the word of God anymore. You rather sit down and be watching basketball and I'll go visit friends. When David said, uh, I'm so happy when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. When things of God is not moving you anymore. And devil is so wise in his kingdom. You know what devil is doing now? He preoccupy our mind, our time with things that is not important. And he said, pastor, you know I need to work. The one you've been working all this while, what have you gained from it? You need the help of God. Tell somebody, I need the help of God. Can, can, can I hear your voice? I need the help of God. It is your responsibility to come boldly onto the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find help in time of need. Look, the devil will try all means to hold you down and to pull you down. But listen to me this morning, it will not prevail over your life. I can hear your amen. It will not prevail over your life. Do you hear what David said? David said in Psalm 108 verse 12, he said, give us help from trouble. For vain is the what? Is the help of man. Give us help. Give us help. You want to rise in destiny in 2017? 
within the remaining three months, look up to God for help. Not up to men. Look up to God. For your business, look up to God. For what you're expecting to do, look up to God. The author and the finisher of your faith. Listen to me, man will fail you. Oh, this pastor that is standing here can fail you. Oh, do you know that your wife can fail you? Oh, your husband can fail you. Has he made promise? No people make promise now during marriage. This is my vow to you. As you see me stand, I give all to you. All my body and my soul and my life. I will never leave you. No matter what is going on. You are the apple of my eyes. And the only one I'm looking up to. I have no other one. For my life I give to you. Foul. <laughs> have you ever heard that? I'm, I'm not into him anymore. Uh, I, I don't feel for him anymore. Have you heard that before? I, I don't feel for her anymore. He, she's not interesting anymore. <sighs> and you ask yourself. What happened to the love you have before? No, sir. No. What happened to the love you have for her in the present before? Your love for God is more important. It's true help of God and grace that keep two of you together. Don't look up to man. And many times we expect too much from man. We expect too much. And do you know that our God is a jealous God? The day God found that you honor somebody more than him, he will draw his help from you. The Bible says, he that keepeth thee is not sleeping nor slumber. So when he's not sleeping and you now be troubling yourself, say, why am I troubling myself? Why are you are troubling yourself? Trust and obey. For there is no other way to do what? Than to do what? Trust God. Put your hope in him. He said, give us air from trouble, for vain is the help of man. There is trouble in the world. Yeah. And can I talk to all the young people? There is trouble in the world. Stop trusting your, tr your, your, your strength. Oh, st stop trusting your ability. You, you have degree. Stop trusting it. You, you have a good job now. Oh, stop trusting it. Trust God. S trust what? Yeah. Have you ever seen where calamity happened? For one day. A man that is righteous lost all the seven children for one day. What will he do if it's you? For one day, it's not a sinner. Bible says when he comes back from work, he will, come, he, will, he will do sacrifice against his children. I don't know if they've committed sin. Let me pray for them. For one day, devil begin to touch. Trouble can come at any time. That is why you need to trust God. Especially in this environment. The end time is coming. Trust God. Can you preach to someone beside you? Trust God. I can't say trust God. The same David said in Psalm 60 verse 11. said, give us help from trouble for vain is the help of man. Now David is a man that received help from God. Remember when they came to bless the family? His father never reckoned with him. His father forgot him. He didn't remember him. But he received help from God. That is how you will receive help today in Jesus' name. Yeah. Bible said, everybody, how will you forget your last born? How will you forget your last born? How many more that do we have here? If you have three kids, which one do you trouble most on? Your last one. Yeah. What your firstborn did before that you will slap. The last one we did, you will be talking. I will beat you. You send that four time. I will beat you. If the first one did it one time, you give him, him backhand. The last one said, I will beat you. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. Then the first one said, but I did the same thing. Like you didn't even warn me. You didn't even talk. You didn't even warn me. This one you are warning five times. And Bible said, "In prophet told them, I'm coming to bless. And he was not there. And the prophet began to bless. And the father, mother never remember. The prophet said, ah. you, you want to pour the oil, but the oil refused to open. Where your blessing is, nobody will take it. Yeah. <laughs> you are not listening. What God has prepared for you this, this year, no power will take it away. Now, they, they, they almost poured the oil. God told this prophet, Elijah just have a big chest. He can't carry the oil. Everyone that wants to represent you in the spiritual realm to take what belongs to you, the Lord will fight for you in Jesus' name. <laughs> the prophet said, we will not sit down. Go and call that boy that you said is in the bush. It doesn't matter where you are now. Either you are in the bush, either things are not working for you. Before the end of this year, the Lord will give you a testimony. I can hear somebody, you will have a testimony. 
And you will have a testimony. You need help to prevail in life. You need help to rise up in destiny. You need help to overcome the battle of your life. Do you know that you can't choose your battle in life? Ah, you can't choose your battle. Thank God for those of you that are born with silver spoon. But you know when they born you with silver spoon, you need to learn how to use the spoon. Some people are born with silver spoon, but there's no training. So when they face challenges, they were like jelly. They don't know how to face. Like some of you that you, you have to mix gari and um, beans as eba. Have you seen people eat gari with uh, beans before? They're strong with no soup. It's not soup with beans. Beans and eba. You, what do you call it, man? They say it's concrete. Yeah, concrete. Yeah. Have you have you seen people eat in different way? Now some of you are born with silver spoon. Have you seen people that they have to pick up their food from the dung hill? Have you watched TV that is real? It's not just TV. Have you been in an environment that people have to beg for people to give them little soup to eat in the morning and night? Have you ever been in a place that people are looking for something to even taste, to eat, but nothing to eat? Have you ever been there before? Have you seen people that have been there before? Man, the first time I came to the U.S., we were in California for conference. And in the front of my hotel with my friend, we saw... Just went to the door, outside the box, to the garbage can. And he picked out the McDonald's wrap and look at it. And it's speaking something. And I told my friend, ha, ah, this is the land we came. <laughs> Whoa. So people still struggle. You know, when we are back there, they, didn't, you, so they tell you a different story. Yes. Now I'm here and I said, Lord, that night I said we need to pray. That, Lord, I will not struggle in this land. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't matter where you are. If you don't take possession of what God has given you, devil prevail. Can I tell you this morning, this morning, you will prevail in Jesus' name. Amen. Over the battle of your life, you will prevail in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of you have been fighting battles since you are born. You will prevail this morning. Amen. Now, many of you enter into battle. You know, so when you enter into battle, it's a battle. That's why we're saying when you want to marry, pray very well. Some people came with battle. Some people were born with battle. So if you enter into it, that will be what you will enter into true life. I'm not saying you should not marry people. Marry. But there are marriage and there are marriage. Now, someone said, Pastor, is it not God that created everybody? God created everybody, but he measures who you marry. You know, so you will look, so who, can, who can handle your battle? You don't marry by beauty. You don't marry by intelligence. You marry by destiny. Uh, does the destiny match your destiny? Will he be able to carry your load? Someone said, do you have a tip on your load? No. Will he be able to carry <laughs> I mean, there is a time women will say, yeah, you can't carry my load. Have you heard that? <laughs> there are three words I've heard a lot. You can't carry my load. Uh, the devil I know is better than the devil I know before. And uh, this, Which other one? Remind me, give me another one you normally use. <laughs> Don't fish. Uh, give me the one you women normally use. <laughs> it, uh, you are not up to my level. Uh, which one? Uh? You are not my class. <laughs> eh? Sugar size. <laughs> Have you noticed that when you are getting old, your leg begins to shrink? <laughs> and some of you, when you are hearing that word, instead of you to run, when somebody tells you you yes, should get size, you will send it. By my God, Holy Spirit told me you are the one. When they tell you, by the time they start buying shoes of 1,000, you find that your salary is just 1,200. <laughs> and they tell you you should get size. You need help of God. That's somebody I need your help to prevent the battle of my life. Lastly, you need help to rise in destiny. You need help to what? It's only God that can help you to rise. And there are power to bring you down. Do you know that one of the things that is difficult to do is to rise? One of the things that is difficult. That's why those that have risen in life, they are on top. They don't want to come down. Because sometimes they know what it took them to rise. Have you ever have, have a man that have a PhD in law? And things happen, terrible things happen, and it lost the license. Anytime we say to talk to pastor, they just implicate me. Do you know how far it takes to be a lawyer? Now become a PhD holder in law. And some that those years just waste. It's like you making being a medical doctor and you are implicated. Do you know the one that killed himself in New York? Just like, you remember the man that killed himself, killed other people? wasted years to rise require the power of God to stay there require the help of God so while you are rising you need his help while you are there you need his help are you ready for his grace 
Because without God, you can do nothing. He says, separating yourself from me, you can do nothing. That is why I wonder many of you that are children of God that you don't take things of God serious. You thought you can handle your life by yourself? You thought you are strong by your own? Because God help you. Uh, okay, because you have a good job, you thought it's by your strength? Oh, it's God that helped you, not you. Have you seen some of your mates that are better than you in school? They are still struggling. Have you looked back and see some of them? That are still begging, that are not in your place. As you look for job, God just opened. As you finish, God just opened door for you. And you thought it's by your power. No, it's not by your power. It's by his mercy. Rise up on your feet this morning. You need his help. You need his help. Ooh.